What's going on guys? It's Friday afternoon. Lunch. Gotta run a quick errand and um wanted to try to get the bike out. It's uh I guess hovering around 60 degrees here in New Jersey and uh wanted to give you guys uh you know some looks of the of the bike after I installed the fairing. Wanted to give you my opinion about things. So uh if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, like, comment, smash that bell for you know notification on being uh aware of upcoming content. But um yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get into it, so stay tuned, roll that intro. The last video did the final assembly of the RWD FXR fairing. I like it. I mean, it's, you know, it's a high quality product. They're well known for these FXR molds. There are a few, uh, few players in the space, RWD being one of them, IMZ Elite also on the West Coast. Um, Dominator Motorcycles, I think it is, or Dominator Cycles in the UK. They're really well known for doing these fairings. Um, but all in all, I went with uh, RWD. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy with it. Did my research up front. And, uh... You know, I mean, right now, it's, uh, I'm really not getting any buffeting at all. Not that I was, uh, you know, not that I had a problem with it before, because I really didn't. You know, I bought the Road King knowingly that there isn't a fairing. Um, you know, I've been riding Harleys for the last 10 plus years. I've told you guys before, I've had a couple different bikes. I've actually had two Sportsters, two Street Bobs. Um, this is my fifth bike, and um, you know. So my point is, like, you know, I didn't. I, I'm used to riding without a fairing. Uh, I just, you know, I just, I like working on bikes. I like that's a, it's a hobby. Um, I, you know, I, I can't seem to sit still with, <laughs> you know status quo you know I mean I get it and just leave it that's just not my MO you know I like tinkering I'm a handy guy um, you know following in the trends right if you will so you know when I came across if you saw one of my videos I think back in December I was talking about things I was going to do with the bike in the winter time or the off season and I didn't talk anything about a fairing well you know holidays roll around and I start like I start out on YouTube and I roll across Matt Laidlaw's build, that FXRT King build that they did, and I loved it, man. I fell in love with it, and uh, I thought it was really, really tasteful, tastefully done. Um, you know, some people are like, "Why the hell didn't you get a, you know, just get a road glide?" Well, dude, you know, road glides exponentially more money. I bought this bike pre-pandemic and I stole it um, for one. So, you know, I had it I had a budget on what I wanted to do. I wanted to put the fairing on based on what they did, and I like the raw look. So, you know, from my GoPro right now, you can see it's raw. It's all open, you know. I mean, I don't have infotainment any of that stuff. I didn't put speakers in. I uh, went with the T-bar setup. So, you know, it it doesn't cost me a fraction of what what a road glide would, but um don't get me wrong, I love the Road Glide. I mean, if, if I had... If I had that kind of money, well, at the time, I would have uh, would have gotten it. Let me... I 
mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I bought this. I bought this 2017 Roking Special in. What the hell was that? Um, Pre-pandemic. I guess it was the fall of 2019. I think. Anyway, some fall of 2019 or fall of 2020. I bought it in Florida. And I stole it. I mean, it was there was 2,000 miles on the bike. I got it for like 16, I think 16.5 was what I paid for it. If not, and if I'm off, it was like 16.7. I'm not off by a lot. I mean, 2,000 miles, that was a steal, right? So, you know, fast forward to the pandemic and demand of these bikes is through the roof and, you know, prices are up. I mean, a new new Road King special, I think at, the, at that time was like 20, 21, maybe 22, something like that. Um, Road Glide, I mean, just under $30,000. I mean, hey, like the point is that the deviation is, is pretty significant. I've done a lot to this bike, um, modification wise, but I can tell you I haven't spent $10,000 or better. That's, that's for damn sure. Um, you know, when I got this bike too, I uh, I parted a lot of stuff. You know, so I sold a lot of stuff to to earn the money back to buy new stuff. You know, I really haven't dipped into the pockets too much. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm definitely happy with it. It's that Clockworks nine-inch flare that I put on the front. I did not use the stock windshield that came with the kit. Uh, decided to go with the Clockworks nine-inch flare. I really love their products as well. Um, they put out some super high-quality stuff. Um, I love their windshields. I did the blackout or the the dark smoke, however you want to call it. And I, I think it's I think it's the perfect height. If you guys were looking at my GoPro. My eye level is just above the top of that windshield, so um, I, it's going right over my helmet right now. It's not, I could probably go a hair taller, but candidly I don't, I don't really like the look. Um, and this isn't really, this isn't bothering me at all. And again, I'm used to riding a bike without a fairing, you know, and then on top of it all, I'm wearing a full face, obviously to vlog, but, um, you know, this to me, um, <laughs> it, it works out really well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all in all, great product. Um, I, I kind of mentioned some of the, some of the downside when, um, I did the, pre the prior videos, you know, it wasn't primed, probably the best, or, you know, they they call out that, uh, you know, there, there's some basic prep that needs to be done. Well, that's definitely not the case. I mean, there's a lot of prep that needs to be done. Um, so, like I said to you guys before, just be aware of that if you get it. Um, paint, you know, I told you with prep and paint, it can be very costly depending upon the the amount of work that needs to get done to the fairing. Uh, gave you the price point. All, all in all, I, the whole project cost me just under 10, just under 10, just under two grand. I did all the labor. Um, so that's what you can expect. I think that's also including the, uh, the clockwork shield because that was about, I think just over 200. So when I say just under two grand, I'm already leaving leaving room for that. So, and you don't have to get that. That was just a decision I made to, you know, give it give it some more, you know, give it a better look. Um, that swooping, that flare, that flare definitely helps. The one that comes with the kit is just a it's just a straight shield. So, uh, this is definitely shooting the air a little bit up and over my uh, helmet than the. Um, than the art, the one that comes out of the kit with the RWD, but yeah. So so.
So the product I'm super happy with the, and it's very stable, right? So, you know, some folks were asking me, you know, you know, how does that thing mount up? You know, I mean, is it sturdy? Like, is it going to be impacted by the elements, the wind, whatnot? It's, it's super sturdy. Okay. Like imagine a bat wing or, a, and I think the bat wing is, is really only mounted to the forks. I think that's ultimately how the bat wing sits, but the, and this is like the road glide because it's a, it's a static fairing. It's not, it doesn't, you know, move when you turn the bike, right? So it's mounted off the, the frame of the bike. So it sits, sits, it sits stable. Um, so the bracket, the bracketry that it sits on is similar to what the Roglot has. So mine's just mounted directly to the neck, all right, between um, the forks. And um, there's also a brace that runs across, that runs across the fairing, bolts into the left and right back sides of the fairing, and then mounts directly to the frame of the bike. So. It is super, super stable. So there, there's no concern there. There are different ways that you can mount this based on the package. So if you go to their website, Russ Warnemont Designs, um, if you have the stock engine guard that comes out of the box, I shouldn't say out of the box, but that comes stock with the bike, that, that engine guard is a lot higher up, okay? It sits a lot higher up. So if you follow my GoPro, it comes up a lot higher. So there is a different mount where you don't have to use the brace in there that comes with two engine mount bolts. Not bolts, but brackets that just hook to the engine mount and you could do it that way as well. So there are, there's two different ways you can do it. I'm <laughs> Side note, I'm trying out because I'll show you guys sometime in another video. I don't have the best helmet. I mean, it's not the most high quality helmet on the market. It's a Bell Qualifier DLX Blackout. It's like $159, $160 helmet, something like that, right? It's a great helmet. It's super comfortable, um, but it's, you know, it's a little loud. Uh, and, you know, like I said, to vlog and everything, I didn't want to spend a fortune on these you know, first helmet I got, but it's it's cheap helmet, right? <laughs> but point is, I'm trying out, trying to cut out a lot of that noise with the wind, so I have my lower vent closed. <laughs> and with me talking here for the last couple minutes, it's like perspiring on the uh, on the shield. <laughs> so it's fucking up my view. But um, I, you know, I need to invest in a little bit better helmet, but. This is working out fine for now. I'm just, just trying to get a little bit better sound quality, um, but it's not really gonna be there because this, and I apologize for that guys. This is not, uh, I don't have the high, highest grade setup there is, but I'm, I'm trying, using what I have. So anyway, but um, yeah, I mean, to, to close the loop on the fairing, I'm super happy about it. I wanted that, you know, performance bagger look, which I got with the T-bar setup. Uh, I went with Kraus, which I really love their stuff too. Again, you know, that uh, I'm not including that in the price. You know, I spent a little money there to get the T-bars, the the Flymoto T-bar with the Kraus isolated kickback at 12-inch rise. Um, you know, Krause's, their products are expensive too, but you get what you pay for, right? I can tell you that the, the, the quality, the craftsmanship of their product is, bar, is, is next to none. I mean, if you're looking through my GoPro right now, just to call out, you know, sometimes trying to figure out the, the rise and, and the overall height of these, it's not the easiest thing to do. So, you know, one of the reasons why I did go with them is the adjustability that comes with the, you know, their, their riser setup. Like I went with the 12 inch rise, but I don't have to take this whole damn thing apart if I decide in the future I want to go lower or if I want to, you know, add. Um, you know, because I, I went kind of 
conservative on what I wanted to do. You know, I went from a 16 inch Carlini Gangster Ape to this is a 12 inch Krauss riser with an additional one and a half, I think, for the T bar setup ultimately. So I was conservative because I really liked the placement of where I was before. Um, so, you know, the whole thought process was if I need to put extensions in there, I can, and they offer that, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very high quality product and I have nothing but great things to say about it um, so far. I mean, I love it. Um, there are a lot of competitors out there, a lot of other great products, nothing against them. I just decided to go with Krauss because I'll tell you, you know, Thrashin's another one, Thrashin Supply is another one that similar configurations and dude they they put out gangster stuff too I mean I have their floorboard set up down below brake pedal brake lever um, toe and heel shifter love their stuff also I mean <laughs> they're my, you know my point is there's so many great manufacturers out there and I'm not paid by any of these guys or anything like that it's just my own coin, um, my own opinion, um, but uh, you know, really, really, really liking this this stuff. Really happy with it. Yeah, so I'm gonna end it here. Um, like I said, this is gonna be a quick one, somewhat. As always, guys, I appreciate you. My current subscribers, new ones, please consider it. And um, I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Look out for more content, more to come. And uh, talk to you guys soon.